Have you ever wondered why you see some teams training with small balls, small goals, or maybe in just a tiny corner when you have bigger options? I mean, why would you use a small football instead of a normal sized ball? Well, it actually makes sense. Let me try and explain. If you play football yourself, you've probably seen players play on a smaller area than the full pitch when doing a drill like trying to keep possession. And maybe you've tried it yourself, but didn't really understand why. Well, when you downsize the area instead of using the whole pitch, you essentially limit yourself. And through that limitation, you force yourself and the rest of the team to focus on playing in a smaller area. Because when playing possession, it kind of makes sense because you can practice beating intense pressure and playing a fast-paced game. Also, you get a lot more touches and passes when you play on a smaller area because you're closer to your teammates and thus it's easier to pass. At times, at least. This is a common theme in football to limit yourself in some way or remove parts of the game to more intensely practice a different part of the game. You basically focus a little bit more. We see this as well when doing dribbling or passing exercises. For instance, if you only played football matches, you wouldn't have many opportunities to practice your dribbling because in a match, you may only get a few chances to dribble if you get any at all. Therefore, it's important to sometimes only practice one part of the game at a time. And using a small area can help you do just that. Now, maybe playing in a small area makes sense. But how could using a small goal help you out in any way? Well, a small goal can sometimes be effective and helpful, but you should, however, also be aware that it's not always the right solution. See, small goals can often be effective when doing a passing game or dribbling course, or when your team plays a game that's not focused on finishing. A drill where you're under no circumstances should use a small goal, though, is a finishing drill. Because here, it's important that you get used to the size of the goal you normally play on and thus don't mess up your muscle memory by using a small goal. However, with that said, small goals are good to practice your passing because passing is a little bit easier and a small goal can simulate the area which you need to hit when you're doing a pass. So try this out next time you do a passing drill with your team or by yourself and see if it doesn't feel a little extra good to both get the pass right but also score a goal at the same time. When I first saw a team using small footballs to practice, I gotta admit I was a little bit confused. Because it looked like someone accidentally brought out handballs or maybe the kids ball instead of real normal sized footballs. But when I saw how they used them and tried it out myself, I actually started to realize why this might help you. So these smaller footballs should never be a substitute for a normal sized football and they certainly don't fit every exercise or every training session. But if you use them with care, you can actually gain a lot by using smaller footballs. But how should you use them and why? Look, using a small football has mainly one purpose and that is to improve your technique. These balls should not be used for bigger drills where you focus on game sense or team play unless of course the purpose is to have a lot of fun. Now these balls should be used for smaller drills where you focus on the technical aspect of the game. That could be a passing drill, a dribbling drill or maybe a drill that focuses both on fitness and passing or dribbling. Because in these drills you can actually benefit from using the small football as you make it harder for yourself and limit yourself like we talked about earlier. When using a small football, you have to be even more precise with your touches than with a normal sized ball and it automatically makes you better at controlling the center of the ball, which will give you a better sense of how it moves when you connect with it. And now, you have to be focused every time you do a touch and thus you can't really autopilot through a dribbling course like you maybe would using a normal sized ball. Of course guys, remember that these different small things shouldn't be a replacement for playing with a regular sized ball or in a regular sized area. Instead, they should help you isolate parts of the game and thereby build on top of your already existing technique. So guys, training with small things, in a small area on smaller goals and with a small football actually makes sense at times if you just want to do that little extra thing. But guys, 
What should we teach you next? Let us know as always in the comment section right down below. Remember, of course, to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on. Of course, if you need new boots or new kits or anything football related, we have the lot over in the link to unisportstore.com to your left. And of course, finally, remember that if you want to keep learning as a football player, the playlist in the corner right there is absolutely awesome. And with those words, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.